Welcome to the Cave of Academic Wonder. This is where scholars go to find the right books for their students. Uh, I've been spelunking down here in this cave for four decades, looking for the best books for my students. You find some very interesting things. First, some books are thousand-page tomes, systematic theologies, and uh, they're a lot like this road night sphere. They're rare, they're beautiful, they're big. And then there's those that some folks like a lot. They're like crystals. They have every new doctrine that comes down the pike. And if a new idea is there, it's right there in the book. And so you can keep up with the thinking of uh, those who are trendsetting. Now, they may not be orthodox, they may be moving away from... Uh, a historic evangelical orthodoxy, but the point is this, is they're the theology today, and they're very attractive. And some of these become gems in and of themselves, like this beautiful piece of tiger eye. Uh, these books are the ones everybody has to quote in order to be uh, respectable and accepted in the academy. And some of them are done with a lot of heart. And so they warm you up as they teach you the latest thinking, quote-unquote. Now, at the same time, there are other books that come out defending historic orthodoxy and having new insights there. But they don't look particularly new and different and attractive to many. And so these books, uh, although, you know, they're, uh, they're reaffirming the doctrine once given to the saints, well... At the same time, they just may not look trendy. Now, God has a different opinion entirely of the way that we look at things. We know from the scripture that the Spirit of God searches the deep things. And God looks there in the darkness. The darkness of what's in our hearts, and in this case, the darkness of what's in the books. And this is what God sees. God sees some books, the ones that are supposed to be impressive, actually, even the heart, are kind of dead. And other books, well, these were the ones that got looked over. Look how beautiful they are. They shine and they glisten and they glow with all sorts of insights and new understandings of God among us. And these are the treasures that one really seeks. They're the, uh, in, the, in the cave of academic wonder. And these are the books that I look for when I find just the right books for all of my precious students. Now, here are the books that I was able to dig out over the years. The first one, The Global God, uh, we actually edited ourselves, my wife and I, with scholars from all over the world. This is a global book, and I thought... We're now in a multicultural age, and the important thing to do now is to be able to speak with one voice across all of Christianity. So the global God will give you an introduction to God in, in the views of many different cultures as we look at the attributes of God, the things that, uh, that uh, God evidences and God's working with us. Now, this is an age of atheism. And so our controversial book will introduce the question of God's existence, the demonstrations of why we believe God exists. And we pick it, I call this a controversial book, because this was the leading philosophical atheist. And he changed to a theist, to the shock and dismay of many of his colleagues. What made him do that? Well, that's what we'll grapple with as we talk about the uh, demonstrations of the existence of God. The third book is the systematic theology that we picked. It's a large book, uh, but we won't be reading all the parts. Uh, what we'll be reading is just the ones germane to systematic theology one, and this is by Millard Erickson, a fine historic evangelical scholar. Now you might wonder, can I ever get a sweep of theology under one cover? And yes, uh, the Christian Theology Reader by Alistair McGrath is excerpts, or we might say snippets, 
uh, from different theological positions right from the early church to today. Again, we won't be reading all of this book. This is a resource book, uh, but we'll be able to, uh, to see some of the doctrines and get a feeling for how they progressed in, the, in thinking over the years. Now, those are the basic books that we're, that we're using, except for one brand new treasure that only you will see. Uh, let me show you a uh, picture that depicts what happens in Hebrews. This is Hebrews 1.3, where uh, God is imaged as God the Father as the light, and then Jesus as the ray that comes to earth. And this book is a book I produced for the class. I spent the last three years writing this, but actually this is my lifetime of scholarship. It goes into this book. It's called The Trinity, The Images We Use and the Theologies They Convey. It introduces theology through looking at the illustrations and images. So you can take this. This is a practical book. You can take it into the parish. You can take it into the pulpit. And this will help you not only in your presentation of the doctrine of God, but also uh, help your people to understand different facets about God. Now, two quick recommendations. A resource book. Again, you don't read this cover to cover. But this book by Dr. John Jefferson Davis. This is a recommended book. I think you'll use it all the time you do in theology. It's doctrines, succinct explanations, and then uh, uh, the Bible verses that go with it. So you'll find this is very helpful to you. And finally, you need a great study Bible. You cannot do better than this Gordon Conwell produced archaeological study Bible. This is the one that I use. And uh, I, I have gotten so much great information that thrills my people when I preach to them. And so, therefore, uh, it's the kind of book that you'll really want. Uh, as you read it, you'll find it at all rich true sermons. And those are the books we'll be using to introduce you to a theology survey.